intractable. That's the word people like to use to describe the conflict which we live. But what happens when you use the word intractable? What it basically means is that we're saying that the conflict that we're living is in essence our destiny. And that generation after generation will continue to fight and not learn how to live together. There are thousands of us who aren't willing to accept that. The hand-in-hand -hand bilingual integrated school network and shared communities are proving that this does not have to be our future. The hand-in-hand -hand story is about breaking the separation that exists between Arabs and Jews in Israel, in which every community almost lives alone. An Arab child can grow up until the age of 18 without meeting an Arab, another Jewish uh, child in his age, and the same thing for Jewish side. The thing is that we, as citizens who share, supposed to share the same citizenship of the same state, uh, are actually living aside uh, from each other. Uh, I give, uh, through my personal story, to let you know what are we talking about, this social separation that exists. I grew up in an Arab family in a town called Kufurkara in the middle of the country at Wadi Ara region. And as many of the Arab families uh, in the state, we got the Israeli citizenship, my family parents got the Israeli citizenship after uh, uh, the establishment of the state, after the war of 48. Actually, we're talking about the Palestinian citizens who remained in Israel uh, after the war. Um, the first 20 years were, uh, we were under military rule, and we were kept more than separated. We were segregated, actually, in order to go to a, to a doctor or to a hospital after, uh, outside the village, they had to have a permit from the uh, uh, military ruler. Now, this situation created this sort uh, uh, of separation that is continued uh, to exist many years and decades after the establishment uh, of the state. So as a child, I grew up in an Arab uh, village, in an Arab environment. I played and met only Arab kids, went to an Arab school uh, learning in Arabic, and the whole environment was an Arab one and social one. My first meeting with the Jewish side was actually at the age of 15 when my parents decided to send me to a Jewish school. And the reason for that is that they wanted to have, to have a good education for their son. The Arab education uh, system suffers from a deep discrimination, institutional discrimination for many years, and created a situation of bad conditions uh, uh, within the uh, schools. And so uh, the alternatives are very narrow, either to go to an Arab school or a Jewish school. And that's why they decided to send me there. Now, the first meeting uh, uh, with the Jewish side was a sort of cultural shock, um, no, knowing very few Hebrew from what I learned from uh, in the school. Uh, first meeting with a different uh, culture, uh, uh, different uh, habits and norms, and all the things that I had to deal with as a 15 years old uh, teenager. Um, but this uh, experience, uh, brought me and gave me opportunity to see many things that a regular Arab teenager or a regular Jewish teenager don't see in his life and he, the, the way to be exposed uh, to, to the other side and to experience uh, daily life matters of which is not related uh, uh, to politics and the conflict situation that uh, we experienced as uh, our community. So we, we made friendship, we uh, uh, played uh, soccer together, 
and we even were happy when the school was closed for some reason <laughs> as a school student. <coughs> this was very influential on me and, and the way that I started to look at the reality in sort of complexity, which is far from black or white uh, perspective. I was born in Berkeley, California. My parents helped to start a Jewish day school so that we get a good Jewish education. And I went to Young Judea and to Habonim Youth Movements, uh, where I had developed a very strong connection to Israel. My parents, my father's parents, had been born in Poland and uh, immigrated to America in the early uh, 1900s. And I had both that strong sense of connection to Eastern European Jewry and, of course, uh, the Holocaust experience there, that might be everything before that. Um, and also to the American experience uh, as immigrants. But really for me, the Israeli experience was, uh, and the story of the Kippur and of building the land was what really most influenced me. I went on the Young Judea Year Course program in 1990-91. It was the year of the Golden Book. And every student had to make a decision as we got closer to January. Would we remain or would we leave? And our parents had to sign the document that they wouldn't <coughs> sue the organization if something happened. When it was my turn to call my parents, I picked up the phone and I said, did you guys get the letter? And they said, yes. I said, are you going to sign? And they said, what do you want us to do? What do you want to do? I said, I want to remain. I want to be here. I'm not sure exactly what it meant for an 18-year-old to be staying on a gap year program and what I could really do to contribute, but it felt like the right thing to do. And in 1998, I decided, I decided to move to Israel and to try to be part of building the land, whatever that meant in that time and age. And then, years after, uh, when I uh, became a parent, uh, the former experience of being uh, uh, exposed to the both world, I uh, became an activist uh, in two main field. One is uh, active in promoting relationships between Arabs and Jews uh, in Israel, but also uh, at the same time being exposed to the conditions where the Jewish life is actually, I got to recognize how the gaps between uh, Arabs and Jews in terms of conditions and discrimination uh, are. So I also started to work amongst the Arab society in empowering and training uh, leaders and social leadership in order to create that change. Now, when it comes to me, um, uh, when I became a parent, I started to think about where do I want to educate uh, my children. Now, uh, on one hand, um, the, as I said before, the Arab education system suffers from a lot of uh, bad conditions, and it wasn't uh, a satisfying option. Uh, on the other hand, sending them to uh, a Jewish school uh, meant that they will not uh, um, study their language, they will not uh, uh, get you know, to know their culture, and they will not learn their heritage. Actually, it's a sort of losing uh, uh, their identity and assimilation in other culture without uh, knowing their culture. So both options uh, were not satisfying. Now, at that time, I'm talking about all the year 2002, uh, uh, we were in the middle of an intifada, and uh, relationships between the communities were in a very uh, bad discussion. I'm talking about my region, Wadi Ara. Uh, uh, for many weeks, uh, many Jewish citizens were even afraid to cross the Wadi Ara road from the north and uh, to the south side of the country on the opposite. Um, so we were a group of uh, Arab and Jewish activists who used to work in joint programs together, thinking about what happened actually that 
the relationships between the communities and many programs who brought Arab and Jews uh, with the students or teachers or activists actually collapsed. And something in the way we acted was not enough. Something that didn't stand the store that the relationships between the two communities had. And so we started to think differently. We felt that we need something different, radical, fundamentally, from what we used to do until then. Um, and so we came to the idea of education. Actually, what we wanted our children to grow up together, to get to know each other from the early childhood, to know the language uh, of each other. And for, for, uh, uh, for us, the most important thing is to educate them in different, for different values and things that we were as children uh, used to. And the, the issue here is uh, the mutual recognition that we're here two uh, uh, communities that on one hand share, supposed to share a, share, uh, uh, a shared equal citizenship but doesn't exist. Uh, uh, so what we need is a mutual recognition on the right of each of us to be equal and to have uh, full right, equality, and uh, uh, something that creates a daily life that uh, break the separation between the two communities that exist socially. Um, um, so these are the, the, the base uh, principles of uh, the school that we were uh, seeking to establish and started to think how to do that. Um, 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 so what we call a bilingual school that the, uh, is a school that we teach in Hebrew and Arabic, multicultural, based on the recognition of the differences uh, that exists in the identity of the two groups, um, uh, where multiculturalism, um, um, uh, celebrating and giving place to all uh, um, holidays, uh, faiths, and other things that exist between the Arab and Jewish community. So we worked for one and a half year on that uh, um, uh, project. Uh, in 2004, actually, we established, uh, we opened the school in Kufur Qara, in Wadi Ar, uh, with uh, uh, 120 students, equal number between Jews and Arabs. And today, uh, we're having uh, 320 uh, students uh, uh, in an equal uh, number also that comes every day together to the school in Kufurkara from all over the region, Jews and Arabs, and study together. Even before we had children, my husband and I knew that we wanted to, or we talked about how we wanted to send our children to the YMCA Jewish Arab Preschool. Then we had real children, and we had to make real decisions about where to send them to school. On the one hand, a natural choice might have been maybe one of the progressive Jewish schools in Jerusalem, similar to the kind of Jewish day school that we had grown up with. And on the other hand, at this point, we heard about Hand in Hand, a school in Jerusalem where Jews and Arabs were going to school together, bilingual, multicultural. One morning when I was bringing my, my middle son, who was about a year and a half, to his daycare, as I was coming up, another mother, who I knew a little bit, she was a researcher at a local think tank, uh, she was coming downstairs, and her son was playing at the bottom of the stairs. As, as she came down, the little boy says, Ima, Ima, I killed Arabs, I killed Arabs. And then the mother said, come on kid, we're late, we have to go. Now I could understand why growing up in conflict children would play a game like that. What I couldn't understand was why that mother didn't take her child by the shoulders and say, we don't talk like that. We don't play games like that. Not everybody is our enemy from the other side. And I thought, I'm not sure that I by myself can teach my child those values. I know that when Beitar Jerusalem fans scream death to Arabs, I can teach my child that that's wrong. 
But when you grow up in conflict, as much as I can understand the fear and the hatred that comes with that, we have to work hard on both sides to make a different future and to teach our children the ways to work together. Hand in Hand started in 1998 with one class of kids in Jerusalem, first graders, and one class in the Galilee. Now we're six schools throughout the country with 1,000, almost 800 children. We've got huge demand. In every school, it's Jews and Arabs together. The schools are part of the public school system. We're working with the core curriculum and core funding and core supervision from the state with a shared calendar and bringing everything in, both to celebrate and also to contend with the real challenges that that means. We're also uh, building community around the schools that we established because we believe that we adults should be part of the change that we're uh, looking for our children. Uh, almost immoral, I would say, that we uh, do something and wish something with, for our children without being uh, part of that. We can't create the change in the shoulders of, of our children. And also, uh, we want to offer the adult community, the families, uh, which comes to the school, but others in the region, the opportunity to create uh, uh, relationships and to deepen uh, understanding and re uh, with, towards each other, something that doesn't happen uh, uh, in the daily life. So in our community uh, programs, uh, we do um, organize activities that offer the families and the adults <coughs> different uh, kinds of uh, things like uh, uh, family trips that aim uh, to uh, just um, uh, let the families, Arabs and Jews, spend a good time together. We offer also organized dialogue group that in which uh, adults can come and share ideas and ask questions and share feelings about things related to the social and political issues that happens in general in the state and but also between the two communities. And we see this as a crucial part that can maintain the relationships, the way that people, in a way that people can come and feel free. Uh, to bring uh, different feelings, hesitations, and questions that they have, things that they uh, don't understand and wish to discuss uh, with the other side. Um, also culturally, uh, we organize different kinds of activities, like uh, we have a program called uh, Madrasa, in Arabic, or Midrash, Beit Midrash, in which we choose different cultural issues that uh, uh, people can come and read text together and, uh, um, you know, enrich their intellectual and spiritual life. Not everything politics. Uh, we're, after all, human beings that seek to uh, and have more uh, dimensions in our existence than uh, the political aspects. So we do this also. In general, uh, the community program creates a comprehensive uh, experience for the whole family in which the children come to a joint school, but also the parents share a, a shared community uh, together with them. There's a lot of joy in what we do every single day, but there are those who don't agree with what we do. At the worst extreme case we had in uh, three years ago, November 2014, an arson attack from those who were against what we're doing. But what that also did was to create a huge swell of support from Jews and Arabs, religious and secular, throughout Israel, and people even from throughout the world who declare their solidarity with what it is that we're doing every single day. And then the demand uh, uh, to the schools uh, and communities. Uh, we see that over the years, more and more parents and families apply and want to come and take part. This year only, uh, we were not able to accept almost 800 families that wanted to come to our six schools all, all over the country because we don't have uh, enough space uh, to accept uh, everyone. 
We're currently in six cities with the huge demand and many people asking us to start new schools. Over the next five years, our plan is to open up three more schools in Nazareth Elite, in Akko, and a third place to be determined. And the ideal is that we would be in every mixed city and every mixed region, there would be at least one vibrant Jewish Arab bilingual multicultural school, part of the public school system, and with the strong communities around it, proving that Jews and Arabs can live together. Thank you.